Congress versus the FBI heats up. We have Jim Jordan, James Comer, and Kevin McCarthy all saying that it's about time to do whatever it takes to rein in the FBI in the wake of the Durham report. You see this article we'll take a look at from Jim Jordan saying everything is on the table. And James Comer sent another letter into the FBI, which we will review. He's demanding access to more documents. Jim Jordan will explain it as well. But let's start at the top with the jurisdiction that Congress has over this issue. In this situation, we're asking ourselves, well, the FBI seems like it just runs itself. They kind of do whatever they want these days. And so does Congress have any power to do anything about them? Kevin McCarthy says, you better believe we do. And everything's going to be on the table here soon. Speaker, I want to get one more comment from you on the call that you had with FBI Director Christopher Wray on Friday. You know that uh, James Comer has a subpoena out for the document that he wants to see. Are you going to be able to get that document? What went on with your call with the director of the FBI? Well, I want to be very clear with the FBI director that Congress has a right and we have the jurisdiction to oversee the FBI. Yeah, this Ray. This is one piece of Punk. paper that a chairman of a committee has requested to see. Give it to him. He hasn't even acknowledged whether he has this document, but he hasn't even provided it. I explained to the director they that we it. will do everything in our power, and we have the jurisdiction over the FBI, that we have the right to see this document. Mm. I believe after this call, we will get this document. You better get it there, Kev. We're all waiting to see it. We know the FBI has it. They know they have it. And they just keep snubbing their nose at you people and the American public, and we're all getting tired of it. So what are you going to do about it? But I also want to ask about the power of the purse. Can Congress just defund these punks over there? Here is the story over from the Epoch Times. They write the following. They say the Durham report says that everything is on the table after the Durham report. Jim Jordan says that everything is on the table when asked about opening a probe into the Clintons. Ooh, let's see what this says. They say House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan said on Sunday that the committee is going to take a good hard look at individuals highlighted in the recently released Durham report saying that nothing is off the table into potential probes. Jordan made the remarks in an interview on Fox News, which we'll walk through, in which he was asked about new investigations in light of the Durham report. We learned that the FBI, of course they did, dropped four criminal investigations into former President Bill Clinton and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton ahead of the 2016 presidential election. You're kidding me. The long-awaited Durham report showed the FBI began investigating claims in late 2014 that two foreign governments were trying to make illegal donations to buy influence during Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Does that sound familiar? It almost sounds like a Russian hoax or something. Oh yeah, it's like exactly what they blame Trump for. Oh yeah, that he didn't do. Later, three different FBI field offices launched probes into the Clinton Foundation for possible criminal activity. They're like, man, a lot of money is being funneled into this organization. They have the bank accounts, all the numbers and everything. And they're like, man, this is definitely a corrupt criminal organization. Bunch of FBI agents. Like, let's figure out, we finally get the results from our search warrant back. Durham found that all the criminal investigations into the Clintons were later shut down by senior officials in the shredder, with agents cited in the report as saying that the probes lingered as investigators were tippy-toeing around Clinton because they thought she would be the next president, and they were scared with the big name Clinton. <laughs> Look at these people. These are your tough FBI agents. They're supposed to be out there, you know, fighting for justice. No, they just want to go through Melania's drawers. At the same time, Durham found that the probe into former President Trump should have never been launched, as we talked about. And there are other people who have been highlighted in the report who should be prosecuted. Now, they're talking, saying here, nothing is off the table. It's critical that Americans know what is happening here. We got to get all the facts out there. Now, I'm curious if Congress is going to defund the FBI or do anything else or if anything else is on the table, but apparently other investigations are. Here is what Jim Jordan said when he was explaining this on Fox. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for being here this morning. You bet, Maria. Good to be with you. What is going on with these whistleblowers? Tell us your takeaways from your committee hearing last week. I think the big takeaway is, Maria, think about what we learned this week. The Durham report comes out and tells us that the FBI had no probable, uh, probable cause, no predicate, 
No evidence whatsoever, and yet they launch into an investigation of President Trump and his campaign. Uh, I think the Durham Report's best line was, no, failed in their fundamental mission of fidelity to the law. They didn't follow the law. Then we learn from Fox reporting and other outlets reporting that 278,000 times the FBI abused Americans' rights who were, who were simply exercising their First Amendment liberties and searched the FISA database. And then, of course, we had these whistleblowers who tell us about the retaliation they are getting from the FBI for simply telling Congress, which is what they're supposed to do as whistleblowers, telling Congress that the wrong the wrongdoing that was going on, telling Congress about parents being targeted for going to school board meetings, telling Congress about pro-lifers being targeted for simply praying at an abortion clinic, or telling Congress about the, the memo that said if you're a Catholic attending mass, you could also be surveilled by the Illegal FBI. Illegal Catholics. And for all that, they, they have the full wrath of the FBI come down on them. And as Garrett O'Boyle said, they're attempting to crush them and chill any other whistleblowers from coming forward and telling us about the wrongdoing going on in the Justice Department. What are you going to do about it? We just spoke with Kevin McCarthy. Great question. What are you guys going to do about it there, Jim? We've seen a lot of letters and the FBI just wipes their butts with it. They don't care. About his call with Christopher Ray, it is what it is. Ray is still running the FBI. Uh, you've said you want to use the appropriations process to fix this. How will that fix things? That, I mean, in the end, money always gets people's attention. Yes. And so what we're going to have to do is say, hey, FBI, you can't use federal tax dollars. You can't use the American tax dollars for this kind of activity. Uh. We've got to limit how they spend the money, maybe even limit them. Here's a great example. They want millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in their construction budget for a new facility. Nope, cut no it. No way. No way should we approve that. That, that, should be a, that should be a given. No way we're going to give you money for that. So we have to use... In fact, close their current building, all right? They don't need it anyways. It's too big. It's too ugly. It's right in Washington. Cut it down to size. Send them home. The appropriation part, that's the power that the founders wanted the legislative branch, and in particular the House where constitutionally every spending bill, every tax bill has to originate in the House. They wanted that body, which stands for election every two years, to be the body closest to the people deciding how we spend the money. So we have to exercise our authority, the power of the purse, to limit mm. what the federal government, what the FBI and the Justice Department are doing to the American people. That's right. So that I like the sound of that, the power of the purse, start defunding them. I think that we can agree with the defund the police as long as it's the FBI appropriations process is underway now when will we see a bill that actually uh, cuts back on funding for the FBI come on speaker McCarthy and Republicans are committed to doing all 12 appropriation bills that fund the government over the next several months I think the first one will be coming out in a couple weeks we've been meeting with the appropriation staff our staff on Judiciary Committee to work on how we can limit money American tax dollars being used in these ways and, a, and deal with the overall budget that the FBI and the DOJ is receiving. So that'll be happening. I think the first bill we're gonna pass, first of, of those 12 appropriation bills, will be the week after we get back from the Memorial Day recess. How much, what percent, Jim? What are you gonna be pulling back? But can you really change a culture when you've got the same leadership in place? I mean, let's face it, uh, under Jim Comey or under uh, Christopher Wray, uh, the FBI pursued a FISA warrants against Trump officials uh, because they did not like Trump. We read it all in the Durham report, how they just abandoned all uh, standards uh, and practices. And then they hid the Hunter Biden laptop. They, they sat on it while President Trump was yep. getting impeached yep. about Ukraine. Uh, then they told us uh, COVID-19, you know, we, we wanted to know if China actually was cooperating. They weren't. I mean, it, it's over and over again. Can you make a difference with Christopher Ray still in place leading the FBI? And again, Good I think question the key is the Maria. money. But look, the, the first step is to make sure the country fully understands it. That's why the Durham report, I think, is so helpful. You you mentioned what went on back when in the in the Comey FBI. I think I don't think a whole lot has changed. Remember what they did? They took a dossier that they knew was false. And that became the basis the to go get a warrant to spy on a presidential campaign and to spy on American citizens. I mean, you can't do that in this country. They actually paid a guy, Mr. Danchenko, who just a few years before that, that they investigated building. for espionage. He was trying to pay Gross. people for classified information. And yet the FBI, six years later, turns around and pays him as part of their investigation into President Trump. It, you, you can't make this stuff up. So you point the facts out. You propose legislation to fix it. And the key thing for us. Just so you're clear on this building. I mean, it, Washington's a beautiful place. I, like, I love a lot of the architecture. And then they put this disgusting, gross building 
right there. And you can see it. It's just a total eyesore. Pfizer reauthorization. They don't need it. I think that Elon had the right model. You know, if, if Twitter can function basically the same with an 80% reduction in staff, I think the same thing can be applied to the FBI. In fact, if there's an 80% reduction in staff at the FBI, I think we'd have an 80% reduction, maybe 100% reduction of white supremacy attacks in this country, right? It's coming up at the end of this year. There is no way we're going to support reauthorizing FISA in its current form. Good. No possible way. I think every single Republican on the Judiciary Committee is committed to fundamental change in how that process works. And this report that came out this, uh, this week from Mr. Durham, coupled with the news accounts of the 278,000 times Right. The FBI abused Americans' rights who were simply exercising their First Amendment liberties and searched this database on Americans, including including a congressional campaign, for goodness sake. That has to fundamentally change, and we are committed to making that happen this Congress. So the FISA and the appropriations process is how you rein in this agency that targeted good men okay. like Garrett O'Boyle, Stephen yeah. Friend, and Marcus Allen, who had the courage to come forward and testify this week and tell the American people what's going on with their tax dollars yeah. in the Justice Department. Real quick, do you want to see like... another investigation of Hillary and Bill Clinton? Because in the Durham report, uh, John Durham wrote that while they were pursuing Trump, they made no effort to investigate the claim that Hillary Clinton was taking money from foreigners for her Clinton Global Initiative and the Clinton Foundation. They not only did investigate her like they did President Trump, they gave her campaign a defensive briefing. Right. They should have done the same for President Trump because they literally had no evidence. So we're going to talk with our lawyers. We're going to talk with Speaker McCarthy on where we proceed from, from here. In fact, are there people that were, that were highlighted in the Durham investigation and the Durham report that we need to talk to on the Judiciary Committee? We're going to give that a good hard look. But nothing is off the table because it is critical the American people understand how okay. their government, their agencies have been turned on them, the taxpayer, and we get yeah. all the facts out there. Good. I think appropriations is very important. And the FBI is like any other agency, right? They want their free jet planes and Christopher Ray likes to scoot around wherever he needs to go to his beach house. And you start pulling some of that stuff away from them and they start having to answer specifically to Congress in order to get that money back. We'll see if they actually do that. Now, there is a letter, another one coming out from Congress going over to the FBI. This one drafted May 19th, 2023 from the Oversight and Accountability Committee out of the House of Representatives Congress of the United States, James Comer, Kentucky. He says, to Honorable Christopher Wray at the FBI director, on May 3rd, our committee sent a letter to the FBI, you people, regarding legally protected, highly credible, unclassified whistleblower disclosures. We reference that down here. You remember, we probably read that here on this channel. As Senator Grassley and I described to you that you're aware of, the whistleblower disclosures involve the possession by the FBI and the DOJ of an FD-1023 form describing an alleged criminal scheme involving Vice President Biden and a foreign national relating to the exchange of money for policy decisions. On the same day, the committee issued a subpoena to the FBI that required the production of that form, including any open, closed, restricted access case files created or modified in June 2020 containing the term Biden and all the attachments or documents. Now, the return date, Chris, that you were supposed to respond by was May 10th, 2023. And on that date, the FBI, you people, sent a letter back to us describing background information and programmatic issues related to confidential human source reporting. However, the FBI's response from you did not include the form. So where was that? And you also failed to address whether the FBI possessed documents responsive to our subpoena. And Chris, you proposed no accommodations that would allow the committee staff to view the form. Instead, the FBI offered to, quote, coordinate with the committee staff to discuss whether and how we can accommodate your request without violating our law enforcement and our national security obligations, right? Our sources and methods. And if we tell you about our corrupt president 
our security obligations, our national security obligations will probably be violated. <laughs> if you know the truth, country's going to be doomed. Congress tells Ray, on May 10th, committee counsel asked for an in-person meeting as part of our accommodations process, requesting to meet with you on May 11th or Friday, May 12th. The FBI, you people, agreed to meet with us on Monday, May 15th. And during that in-person meeting, the FBI, once again, did not produce the form that we need. Most troubling, <laughs> says Comer, the FBI staff stated that they were, quote, not authorized ah, to disclose whether the form even exists. Notwithstanding the FBI's lack of cooperation, committee counsel reiterated the legislative purpose of the subpoena, saying, hey, we have to investigate this stuff. We're Congress. And they set forth the committee's national security concerns, and they discussed the safeguards and the accommodations that are routinely used in federal disclosures to protect the identity of confidential human sources. And for anybody who's saying, wait a minute, uh, a, a congressional committee is not capable of doing this stuff. They can't field data in. They can't work with confidential human sources. They can't get data back and forth from the FBI. This is all too complicated. This separation of powers thing is something that is, is absolutely necessary to protect America, whatever they say, which is basically the FBI's posture here. Well, rewind the clock a little bit to January 6, where we had an illegally constituted fake garbage January 6 select committee that was interfacing with confidential human sources, which made up a lot of the activity on January 6, with the FBI hand in hand. And the FBI was basically running point for the select committee. And the select committee was sending their own subpoenas and colluding with the FBI, exchanging data and details all over the place. So don't tell me, FBI, that you don't know how to interface with a congressional committee, because you do. This is something that has been done for years when it was the prior Congress. In lieu of producing the actual document, your staff proposed a second meeting with different FBI employees to provide a briefing regarding confidential human source reporting. Committee counsel agreed to the second meeting, but called into the question whether the FBI was acting in good faith, giving its refusal to even acknowledge the existence of the form at issue. They're not acting in good faith. Not at all. Soon after the first meeting, committee counsel requested that the FBI schedule the second meeting for the same week. However, the FBI could not accommodate the briefing until the following week. Oh. They're stringing them along. The second FBI meeting is now scheduled for May 22, which was today. By the date of that meeting, the FBI will be 12 days past due for the return date on the subpoena. <laughs> this is the FBI just saying, uh, just forget to sign the check. Just don't sign the check. Just uh, send them a check. Here, the FBI's delay in producing a single form, Congress says, is unacceptable. The committee has already offered a reasonable accommodation to address the FBI's stated confidentiality concerns, but the FBI to date has refused to meaningfully engage in discussions about how the committee can obtain the information. They don't care. Instead, it has sought to change the subject, you're kidding, by offering to provide the committee with information it has not requested. Notwithstanding these difficulties, the committee will continue participating in the accommodations process. Okay, great. That's good. You guys just hop on the merry-go-round. The FBI will be sitting there on the park bench laughing with popcorn. And they, they continue with the hopes that the FBI will change course yeah, and begin discussing accommodations <laughs> that are going to meet the committee's needs. All right. As previously stated in our first letter, the committee's independent and objective review will inform Congress of legislative solutions. We're considering legislation aimed at the deficiencies. The committee is seeking meaningful reforms to, all this is great, I mean, it'd be really nice if they could do this stuff. Public corruption, yeah, influence peddling, yeah, federal ethics, yeah. But James Comer, my friend, buddy, somebody's gotta tell you, man, they are embarrassing you guys right now. All of this just kinda makes you guys look dumb, if I can be honest. This is all a joke. This is like them rescheduling the party. You guys weren't invited to the party. They keep rescheduling the dates and something. You're looking like idiots. So it's time to just do something about it, I think. I'm not sure another letter is gonna do anything here. Uh, what, are you gonna schedule another PowerPoint meeting with them? No, it's time. The subpoena was issued pursuant to the authority, he says, and uh, comply with my subpoena. 
Thanks for your prompt attention to this important investigation. Sincerely, your friend, James Comer. We'll see if anything happens there, but Congress has said, at least to some degree, maybe the power of the purse comes back. Congress has jurisdiction to act. We'll see what they do.